While you're standing, I want to insert this in your spirit. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. That he gave his one and only son. That whomever or whoever believes in him shall not perish. But have eternal, everlasting life. Take the seats and let's hear a story of redemption. This term redemption that the Lord has led me to teach on for the month of October. It is defined by the act of being saved. Saved from sin, saved from error, and saved from evil. I don't know about you, but I thank God for redemption. Redemption is God's grace in action. And the good news this morning is everyone qualifies to participate in the process. No one is too far gone that redemption can't reach your home. No, no, no one has messed up too bad that redemption can't come and save you from sin, error, and evil. This morning we're going to open this series up by introducing you to the number five. Five in biblical language is God's grace. And this series will be built on God's grace of redemption. See, grace has two stages. First, grace saves you from hell. Because without grace, we were on our way to hell. Uh, you don't hear that word often in church anymore because it doesn't raise a big offering when you tell someone you're going to hell. It amazes me that at every funeral we can tell everybody is going to a better place when the reality of it is if you have not been born again, if you have not been restored, if you have not been redeemed, you're not going to the place that's better, you're going to hell. But thank God grace saved us from hell. And not only did grace save us from hell, but grace saved us from our hellish ways. Because the truth is, if it was left up to you and I, we would be in a lot of trouble. But thank God for grace. Keeping us, we didn't want to be kept. Grace. And if you have not experienced God's grace, you in the right place. Because my desire at the end of this month is to baptize a whole community yes, Lord. That's right. of redeemed people. Yeah. See, before you can live your best life, you got to have the right spirit Amen. and the right attitude. Yeah. And the right spirit and the right attitude can only be birthed through a relationship with Christ. That's right. I don't care what they're telling you. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, you're spinning your wheels. Amen. You can get a new house, a new car, a new job, and all the degrees you want. But if you don't have a relationship with Christ, there will always be a void in your life that you can't smoke away, sex away, nor drink away. That's right, Pastor. Yes, sir. All the money in the world is coming unto you, but if you don't have Christ. Let's look at these five foundational truths of God's grace. No one, everyone qualifies for redemption. Uh, see, the church can't celebrate this because the church will monopolize 
and make other folks feel guilty and other folks feel unworthy. But the reality of it is, everybody qualifies for redemption. Yeah. Which we just shared, and let's look at it again, closer and slower, John 3.16. For God so loved, we all agree with that, that God loved. But who is God demonstrating and sending his love to? The world. The world is comprised of everybody. God didn't send his love or his son just for the folks who got it together. He sent his love for the world. Amen. And the problem is there are too many church folks trying to lock God out of other folks' life. Oh, and this is the reality. If I tell you a secret, will you promise not to tell nobody? <laughs> Most of us are a few hours away from being at our worst place in life. But grace came in and redeemed us and restored us. So I dare you lock folks out the church and tell folks they're not worthy. They got to wear this and look like this. You, you say, come as you are, but you really say, come as we are. Yeah. 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 Dress how we dress, talk how we talk, and walk how we walk. But the Bible says God so loved the world. And the world is full of mixed up, messed up folks. Yeah, amen. You preaching, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And this is the criteria that allows everybody to be qualified. He says, and whosoever. Uh, you don't like that. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You, you mean the person who, who, who acts like that? Yes, yeah, they just believe. Whosoever. They may not fit your profile. But God says, I'm here to redeem them. That's right. Whosoever. Break this down. Whosoever means the person you discarded, the person you look down at, the, the homeless person, the person on drugs, the person in a struggle, the person that's going through this, that, and another, they still qualify for redemption if they simply just believe. There should never be an empty seat in any church because the church should be filled with people who are desiring to hook up with Jesus. Everybody qualified. Number two, Jesus had a target audience. And it was not the church, but the lost. We, we, we've so messed up the mission of Jesus because we spend all our time in the church talking to church folks seeing the church folks preaching the church folks when Jesus said I have come for the lost yes. we have a church instead of being the church that's right look at Luke 19 look at Luke 19 verse number 10 Luke 19 verse number 10 for the Son of Man, that's Jesus, came to seek and to save the lost. Come on, God. Yes. He didn't come to sing songs. Come on, Pastor. Dance dances. Yes. Speak in tongues. Take up offerings. He came to seek yeah. that which was lost. lost. Yes. So now, 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 now. Let me pretend like I'm talking to a, a group of people who've never been in church before in their life, okay? And it's my wife's birthday weekend, so we're gonna have this big party. And you're all invited to my house. But, uh, imaginary scenario. And you're all invited to my house. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't smoke nor drink. That's right. Nor curse. Uh -huh. I got some other flaws, but those three not one of them. So when you get to my house, you wouldn't come in my house with a cooler of bud. Right. That's right. You, 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 you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have a, a, a sack of your favorite, you know. 
And you wouldn't watch the game with me saying a cuss word every other word because that's not how I flow in my house. Yeah. And you would respect that because you know we're going to his house. Yeah. Now, if I came in your house, I would have to, you know. But in my house. Because you would respect my house. Yeah, that's right, Pastor. So why do we feel so comfortable disrespecting his house? He said, I came for the lost. And if somebody don't dress like you, they sit next to you, you'll move. What? I'm confused that they, they, they gotta go through your 12 step program to be in the church. He said, I came for the lost. If he came for the lost, that means the messed up folks. Not the upright folks. You gonna tell him how to run his house? Lord Jesus. Yeah. I can't wait for the day. I can't wait for the day. I'm telling y'all right now. They already probably talk about it right now on social media because I'm in the back room with Snoop Dogg, but I don't care. They're going to really talk with us. I'm, I'm going to target a local strip club. That's right, Pastor. And I'm going to go in at the business hour. Yeah. And I'm going to pass that track saying, come to the greenhouse. The uh -huh. place you go to grow, and, and I'm gonna loop my way into the back where, where the strippers are, and I'm gonna grab by the hand and pray with them and pray them off the pole, and I'm gonna get them in the choir and on the dance team and on the front row, not the back row, but the front row. And I'm gonna dare any church for the brown dollar. He came for the law. that can sing real good and give real good. That's what the church God called us to build. God said, go get the lost. Because if you get them and teach them, they'll be lost no more. But the church so lazy. We don't want disciple folks. We want to just recruit folks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, preach, Pastor. Yeah. 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 Talking this morning, Pastor. In, 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 in an active sermon, they said, oh, I need some water. See, that's the problem. What you told y'all, the church is outdated. How many folks you think will pump a pole with some water? I gotta go in and pack it. Yeah. <laughs> we tell our kids to come to church with a one dollar ministry. If you want your kids in church, if, if your kid at home has a, has a device that can show them high quality movies, high quality music, and they come to church and the sound system jacked up, Ain't no visual images. When children church starts, I need rockets and bullets and all kinds. Because I want the children to know the church has more power than the world. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. He came for the loss. And we're going to get the loss. Amen. On those long just might we ain't going to let it stop us. He's talking about he wants the loss. Number three, somebody say number three. Oh, I, I thought this was one. He can go all the way off. And I'm still going. Go hard. Hard in the paint, bro. Interactive, sir. Number three, no one is perfect. Huh? Say that again. Yes, I got on a black suit and a white collar. It has no salvation. Amen. Right. No. I was having a discussion with some of the brothers though that say, can somebody define to me what a church clothes? Right, yeah. Right. Say that again, Right. Really help me. Go to church clothes. Because I'm real transparent. I'm, I'm, I'm a free Negro. And, 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 and in, my, in the 20s, not in, in the 1920s, but in my 20s, I, uh, Wednesday night, I go to church. Go to church, go to the club. Thursday night, his night out, he ate in the club. Friday night, you already knew. Saturday, uh huh. Never miss church on Sunday. But Sunday night, at the park, then yeah, to the club. That's right. But, but, I, I was the best dressed guy in the club. That's right. The best dressed guy in the club. Tell the story, guys. But I didn't have a club suit and a church suit. I just had suits. Uh huh. Same suit they go to church. So tell me, who designs? Holy clothes. Lord Jesus. 
Are your holy clothes laced with anointed oil? Because, you know, I'm in a fashion, so I want to go shop at the holy store. Because no one is perfect. But when God looked down at the earth and he, he dropped down in quick words, he said, He ain't no one's perfect, but you're perfect for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Y'all you, 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 you so holy. Y'all. I just love y'all holy church folks. But, but, but Paul, Paul emphasized this point in Romans 3 and 23. For Paul said, All the deacons, the preachers, the intercessors, the pastor, the saints. As hard as it is for me to find them. My mama, your mama, everybody, mama. Uh -huh. All have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. So what gives you the right to say who qualifies to be used by God? That's right. If we all have a past, if we all have messed up in some shape, form, or fashion, who has the right to say who can and cannot be redeemed? Amen. Uh, number four, I'm just saying the truth before we go into the main text. Write this one down. Stone throwers or the stone throwing ministry is unbiblical. Amen. All you judgmental folks, you're totally off track. Amen. Woman got caught up, right? In adultery. Yeah. And uh, they was having a trial. Yes. They found her guilty. Yes. Even though the one she was with uh, uh, wasn't on trial. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they were getting ready to stone her because the law said they had the right to stone her to death because she got caught, yeah. caught up. Uh, yeah. uh, Jesus looks around and, and he and they kept questioning, because they wanted Jesus to say, it's all right to stone her. Jesus peeped the crowd, and he looked and said, oh, that's deacon so-and-so. That's reverend so-and-so. That's prophet so-and-so. That's businessman so-and-so. Oh, oh, that's, that's, ooh. Jesus knelt down and started writing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Friday night, Palace Inn, room 112. 12 noon, you were at lunch at St. Mary's. Not with one, but with ten. Same, man. You live on the north side, but you buy your weed on the south side. And then Jesus said, I got a stone right here, but whoever without sin, come get it. You be the first one to throw it, and all of them going to start walking away. Because the first one saw what he had, what Jesus wrote down, he said, he know our business. <laughs> And can I tell you today, Jesus knows your business, so the next time you broadcast somebody else's business, I want you to know he knows your business, and let me without sin cast a first stone. My sin may not be your sin, but sin is sin. So you stone doors. You're unbiblical. The number five, the five, the five principle of, of grace truth is God's grace is good enough. God's grace is good enough. Second Corinthians 12 and, and 9 simply says, His grace is sufficient. Let me say it again. His grace is sufficient. So whatever my weakness is, His grace is sufficient. Stop trying to make folks meet your measuring tool when you can't meet your own measuring tool. Tweet, Pastor. You always tweet about somebody. Facebooking about somebody. 
But can you look in the mirror and be honest with yourself? If we all knew your real you, I want you to have the ability to, to put the real you on the screen. Would you still be that judgmental? But you say, His grace is sufficient. So they ask me, how are you gonna restore community? Through his grace. But 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 but, but those folks, well, first of all, I don't know who those folks are, because I'm part of the people. I'm one of those folks that his grace. And, and the same grace that got me from down to here is the same grace. I'm, his grace is grace. There, there's a saying, I, I, I want to read this straight from my notes. There is a saying, messed up people mess up other people, and unfortunately, many messed up people have messed up people in the church with their unbiblical attitude of condemnation and their holier than thou finger point. I see you, I see you. You can't get your own children saved. Lord Jesus. You, you left an unsaved man in the bed because you ain't have no power to get in the church. You had a praise this morning. Hey man, you stepping on toes. You can wake him up and get him to buy you a Gucci. Oh, wait a minute. But you can't get in the church. Lord Jesus. Come on. We have the church's power. When you leave the church on the phone without that gospel. You just sung next to her with the lunch with her at the church, and now you're on the phone talking her down. You got There is an entire generation of people wandering in the wilderness of life because the church has stopped being the church. Say that again. One more, one more. My goal is to introduce and reintroduce the real church back to a dying world. Come on, man. The church that Jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail against. The church with power and authority. Yes. The church where love covers a multitude of folks. The church where God's grace is available for everybody. Not just those that think but for everybody. <laughs> Come on, man. An amazing story of redemption takes place in Acts chapter 9. And if we're honest, the story of Saul and Paul is a reflection of all of us. He had a before, uh huh, the old you. The chapter you have you, always been right there. The messed up you. The tripping you. He had a now. And a later. That's the redemptive you. That's when you struggled to get the children. You heard a word and you made your mind up that I'm done with that and I want to become a new creature. And then I, I love to ask for you that that's the greater you that when you got in the word and you got baptized and you got filled with the word and the after you. The greater you. But we don't lose sight of this. No matter what me is on the stage, all three of me are in. I hear you. I hear you. The old me ain't gone. I just got enough new me to cover it up. But you, you hit the wrong trigger. Mess with my babies. And the old me might. I gotta pray daily. God keep the old me from showing up. I like the after me. But I'm not getting to the fact that the old me's still there. But thank God to redeem me and overpower the old me. 
mistake of judging people based on the season we meet them or the worst season they've ever been through. But I don't know about you, but I'm glad redemption does not show with judgmental eyes. Yeah, y'all ready? Let's just walk through this real quick. Acts chapter 9, be, be, be chapter 3, 8, 8 verse. Acts chapter 8 verse 3, watch this. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged out both men and women and put them in prison simply for going to church. Paul was an OG. Yes. Neither blood nor crip, but he had his own game. And he was setting it off in chapter eight. Then look at chapter nine, verse one. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing old murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and permission to take them out. Verse 3, as he neared the markers on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Jump down to verse 18, immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. He could see again. He got up and was baptized. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with disciples in Damascus, and once he began to preach in the synagogue that Jesus is the Son of God. That's right. The man that was destroying the church is now declaring Jesus yeah. the Son of God. See, Paul was not always Paul. And you were not always you. Yeah. Deacon so and so. You weren't always the fella, the woman with your virtuous self. Wasn't always so virtuous. That's right. Because all your kids don't have the same last name. Whoa. Yeah. Hold on, man. Why you gossiping about sister so and so? Look for your family. Yo, him line wasn't always below your knee. Basic dude. Bro, you weren't always on the deacon board. You built some other boards too. Say that again, sir. Walk heavy, dog, walk heavy. See, but if you can reflect on the old you and look at the new you, that'll cause you to give God some praise because redemption found you. Hey, redemption found you. You got to share the gospel everywhere you go. That's why I go so hard in the hood because I thank God for saving me. Yeah. We got to go. We got to go. We got to take the view. was on a journey. And life was nothing but a series of journeys, I told you. Paul was on a journey. But watch this. Redemption tells grace to get us off our journey and get on God's journey because our journey is a dead end trip. And as soon as you recognize you're traveling down a dead end road without Jesus, Dead end street. Redemption tells grace. We'll get off that path. Redemption sends grace to put us on God's journey. Redemption employs grace to redirect our mission, our ministry, and our mindset. See, once you've been redeemed, you shouldn't think the same way you used to think. Amen. Let's redeem the Lord. Say so. Then, then Paul was knocked to the ground. Yeah. Paul was knocked to the ground. Uh, 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 uh. My, my grandmother, sweet, sweet lady, 
But, 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 but I act out. You know, she told me one day in the kitchen, I told her, spank myself, you know. Spank me, come on, man of God. She said, boy. Oh, <laughs> don't make me knock some sense into you. Yeah. And don't make me put God on you. See, the reason she said she will not some sister in me because I was acting out of character. Chest struck out. The old man looked at me and said, Boy, I will knock some sis in you. Mm. See, sometimes God has to knock some sis in us. So Saul was on his beast. Beast mode. And God needed a potential of Saul. So God had to knock Saul off his peace to get Saul's attention. So, so many of you, you're, you're going through something right now, not because God has turned his back on you, but God's trying to knock some sense into you. Because as long as you're in peace mode, you can't be in God mode. You're too arrogant. Too selfish. Too fleshly. So God would not do off your beats to get your attention so he can redeem you and use you so the greater you will show up. You ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. No, you didn't want to get knocked down again, but this So God knocks Saul down. Yeah. Not because he was trying to hurt Saul, but yeah. he wanted to redeem Saul so he can bless Saul. Yeah. I wonder if I ask this question, would anybody be transparent and honest? Did God have to knock you down to get your attention? Many of us wouldn't even be here in church this morning if God would have knocked us down. And we had to look up and realize, ain't no other way up. The Bible says these scales uh -huh. yeah, yeah. fell from Saul's eyes. Yeah. They can see again. See, redemption assigns grace to correct our poor vision. Once I've been redeemed, I don't see life the same anymore. Oh, I don't know about you, but I, I thank God I don't see life the way I used to see life. Amen. When you've been redeemed. God not only restores his vision, but God gives him a new name. God changing the whole game. Once you say yes, he will change you. He can't leave you the same with what he's about to do in your life. You can't be the same with what God's about to pour in your life. Yeah. Yeah. He can do I have a question though. Saul was not by himself. When he got knocked off his beast, yeah. he had his crew with him. That's right. But remember, they, they were gangbanging. Yeah. He had his crew with him. But they did not hear what he heard. Yeah. They did not see what he saw. That's right. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. trying to bless somebody. Yeah. Don't be stuck waiting for other folks. When God says go, I gotta go and I pray my homies catch up with me. The old me said, ain't no problem if my homies get some. But the new me says, my homies better catch me. They didn't hear what he heard. They didn't see what he saw. It. He couldn't wait on them. God was calling his name. And when God called his name, God said, Saul, I'm getting ready to change the name to Paul. Because you're getting ready to become a new creature. And I got purpose and assignment for your life. You missed that. You missed that. God wasn't just talking to Paul. God was talking to you and I. I'm getting ready to redeem you because I have purpose and assignment for your life. And everything you've been through, He's going to give you a ministry. Everything you've been through, He's going to give you a platform of how amazing, amazing grace, amazing.
amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I see. And the Bible says that when Saul got redeemed, and God told him to go down to Ananias' house. And Ananias said, God, isn't he the one? Catch this point right here. The church will reject what God says yes to. God says yes to Paul, but Ananias and the church folks say, but ain't he the one? Ain't he the one? That messed up. Ain't he the one with a record? Ain't he the one that's on that stuff? Ain't she the one on that pole? Ain't she the one on the corner? And God says yes. But that's not the whole truth. You talking about where he was and where she was, but God says that's my chosen man. That's my chosen woman. They've been redeemed. Now, I'm getting ready to use them. The Bible, the Bible says, I like that, but God. Deacon said no. Church folks said no. But God! God, 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 God. I dare you holler, but God! And if, if it were not for God, but God, and if it were not for God, the Bible closes my little story by saying Paul began to preach. And began to put his life on the line for the kingdom of God. The same man that would kill you for going to church is now building churches on the north side, the south side, the east side, and the west side. So what I'm trying to say is I leave you alone is that for God so loved the world. Whoever, whoever says yes to him qualifies. Right, for a redeemed life. Yeah. So I'm going to leave you Jesus. with a challenge. If you've never given your life to Jesus, I, I, know, I, know, I know I feel you. I ain't in my life, no. White man with blue eyes and none have me either. Come on. Mm -hmm. like Jesus in the house. Right. The Jesus I serve yeah. went to church one Sunday. Yeah. And they were tripping. Yes, uh -huh. He flipped the tables over yes. and kicked them all out. And said, In my father's house. The so Jesus I served, that was an angry mob. He said, They're going to throw him over the cliff. He walked through him. Come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here. Come here, Christian. Yeah, Y'all are angry mob. They were talking about Jesus, what they going to do to him. Never stopped. Yeah. The folk was on the yeah. Just kept going by his father's business. Yeah. There ain't no weak Jesus. Yeah. That's power. Yeah. Wow. So powerful. You don't even matter to me. Yeah. Get your life. Get your life. Oh. Yeah. So if you're here this morning, yeah, get your life. But you can't get your life unless you get Christ. Yeah. So meet me at this altar. And let me give you Jesus. Yeah. I was working.